Hello, and welcome to Pandering Hour. I- uh. This is not a good idea. Don't do this. Never do this. Never ever. Like jumping in the deep end. It's fucking lit. <laughs> it's so cool. I'm gonna go throw up right now. This is way better. Dana White is stupid. Uh, where do I find the hose? Uh, for instance, one partner might play baby and put on a diaper. What top 10 killer cucks. <laughs> if you like putting stuff in your butt, that is your right. Put it in there. Put more in there. As much as it takes. And don't worry about straight or gay. It's not about that. It's about your own satisfaction. For you. For us, it's you're gay. But... <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Pandering Hour. Uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking about... Um, it's I don't know how to say the name. Equatorial. It's either Guinea or Guinea. I've seen it um, pronounced both ways. And let's take a look. Um, I guess that's the best way to figure it out, right? Just Google it. Oh, let's get out of here. Okay. So equatorial, whatever. Let's see how it's spelled. Pronounced. Equatorial Guinea. Gu uh, Guinea. It is Guinea. Equatorial Guinea. It's in Africa. As we get closer, it's bordering Cameroon, Gabon, Republic of Congo. And it's also got this little island, Malabo. I've been seeing pictures of it. But it's, you know, this weird square shape, so obviously it was decided later than these other countries. Um, a lot of these other countries are, like, based on water lines, I believe. Like, rivers and stuff. Um, but let's see. That's how Europe was divided up, based on water lines, I think. So, when I googled it, right off the bat... I found a lot of very interesting things on Google. Like the first one, um, CIA.gov. They're the first. Listen, if the CIA wants to talk to you, run, you're, you're fucked. You're screwed. You're screwed. So, let's see. They have a profile on this country. Um, consists of a continental country of five inhabited islands and five inhabited islands. It is one of the smallest country by area and population in Africa. The mainland region was most likely predominantly inhabited by pygmy ethnic groups prior to the migration of the various Bantu-speaking ethnic groups around the second millennium BC. The islands, the island of Bioko, the largest of Equatorial Guinea's five inhabited islands, and the location of the country's capital, Malabo. Oh, so that's that's over here. There's five islands? Oh yeah, there's a little one right there, Corisco. Corisco, Elobi Grande, Little Elobi. Oh, Little Elobi! That's a cute name. That's a cute name. It's just a, it's a little Elobi. That'd be a great name for like a cat. Elobi. People are going to be like, how dare you say that that could be a good name for a cat. Do you know who Elobi is? <laughs> okay. It's got those five islands, right? Uh, Portuguese explorer, of course, the Portuguese. What? Let's. Uh, the Portuguese. Portuguese explorers. <sighs> what did they do? They, uh. Let's just. Let's just, uh. Atrocities. What are some atrocities committed by the Portuguese colonial regime? Uh, the colonial regime committed various atrocities during its colonial rule, particularly in Africa and Asia. These atrocities included forced labors, exploitation of natural resources, suppression of local cultures and languages, the violent repression of the in of independence movements. In Africa, Portuguese col colonial regimes used force of la or forced labor in plantations as well as mines, as well as brutal suppression of resistance movements, 
resulted in significant suffering and loss of life. In addition, the regime's policies contributed to economic and social inequalities that had been that had long-lasting effects on the affected regions. It's important to acknowledge and remember the impact of these atrocities as parts of understanding the history of colonialism. Um, let me see. The biggest one I would say is slavery. Uh, Portugal did not initiate the slave trade business, but it certainly used this. It was already thousands of years old in Africa, where it was routinely carried out. However, due to the amount of colonies and terrain that, that needed work, Portugal, being such a small country, did not have enough people to populate its colonies, and so they could become profitable. The Arab traders of Africa uh, provided Portugal with slaves, and more than 3 million went to Brazil alone. Okay. So yeah, they did some fucked up stuff. Let's see. Yeah, and the CIA. Well, tell me, tell me what you want from it, CIA, huh? Got a whole profile on it, being all public about it. Obviously, they they don't have that much interest if they have a public profile. But they're up to something. They're they always are. Okay. And then. Um, there's some uh, there's some stuff going on. Human Rights Watch, a little spooky. Just get get you guys in there a little bit closer. Corruption, poverty, prov- poverty, poverty, and repression continue to plague Equatorial Guinea. Guinea, sorry, under President Teodoro Obiang Ngueme Mabasogo, uh, who has been in power since 1979. Vast oil revenues fund lavish lifestyles for the small elite surrounding the president, while a large portion of the population continues to live in poverty. Mismanagement of public funds and credible allegations of high-level corruption persist, uh, as do other serious abuses, including torture, arbitrary detention, and unfair trials. Obiang's eldest son and possible successor, Theodoran Nguema, was convicted in France on embezzlement and money laundering charges in two separate cases. The United States and Switzerland agreed to settle with Theodorin, uh, resulting in the confiscation confiscation of assets that would be used to benefit Equatorial Guinea's people. Time out. They agreed to settle, resulting in the confiscation of assets. Okay, so now we have some of their stuff. And I bet it's the really, really good stuff. Okay. And we are... I mean, yeah. Let's let's look at this family. Um, but he's the president, right? Why is... How can his son inherit the presidency? Presidential... Family... This is the guy. He's got an Instagram? <laughs> what do you mean? He's just got... The president has an Instagram? Let's look at this guy's... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? What do you mean there's corruption here? He's got a... He's got gold on his private jet. Where is he? He's in Moscow? Dude. Riding around in carbon fiber motorcycles. This is the president. (laughs) This is the president. Baller, shot call. You can see his boobs bounce. Dude. See translation. How hard it is to be from my country. <laughs> oh, it's so difficult to... Oh, look at this. He's like an Instagram model. Boss like no other. Who is this guy? Just some other African dude? He's oh, serious. V, King VP lifestyle. You can't. You can't. You can't. You're, the president is like, I live like a king. You, you're the president. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. 
This is, he's bragging about it. He's like, yeah, what? Huh? I can't, can't hear the haters. I, I can't hear the haters over my fucking stacks. Come get me. Oh, I, I'm not even in frame. Come get the sum. What? What's that? What's that? My my haters are crying. Oh, they need something to wipe up their tears with. Here, let let them have one. Let them have one. It's fucking stupid. Where even is he? Donald Bird? I don't even know what that is. Donald Bird. He's with a trumpet player? Did I spell that wrong? No? What else is this guy up to? Alright, this is what I would expect. Yeah, this is like Obama playing golf. This is... This is normal. And here he is. He's like, hey, how's it going? I got the beat from Big Buckwild as whoa, that no, I'm not saying it. All the guinea money is for him like whoa. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Dude, this fucking guy. This living it he thinks he's a king. He is the sir. Sir, you are the president. You can't be doing this. What is his net worth? Time out, time out. I gotta see this guy's net worth. Six hundred million! Yeah, you, you're. Oh, he's laundering the funds. He's on the funds. The funds are being laundered. Okay. That's so much money. Are you fucking kidding me, man? Okay. So he's not. He's not doing good. He's not doing good. Uh, who is this guy? Secret. What? There was a secret meeting that he did. Um, Teodoro Obiang. Um, he's a Equato Equatogenian politician and former military officer. Of course, they're always a former military officer. Um, has who has served as the second president of Equatorial Guinea or Guinea? Sorry. Since the since 1979, he's a king. 1979, dude, he's uh, he's the president like Putin is the president. God damn it! This is another one. It's another Eritrea. God damn. Okay. <sighs> take this in because I know there's going to be some shit okay as of 2024 he's the second longest consecutively serving current non-royal national leader in the world tell him that tell him he's not royal <laughs> after after all those Instagram posts on of him on a big chair like he's a king and him putting king shit in all of his posts take away his Instagram for one after graduating from military school, Obiang held multiple positions under the presidency of his uncle, Francisco Macias Nguema, uh, including director of the notorious Black Beach Prison. That I gotta see. He ousted Macias in a military... His own uncle! His own uncle! Killed his family. Are you sure he's not royal? That sounds like some royal shit to do. In a military... Uh, coup in 1979 and took control of the country as president and chairman of the Supreme Military Council Junta 
uh, after the country's nominal return to civilian rule in 1982. He funded the Democratic uh, Party of Equatorial Guinea in uh, 1987, which was the country's sole legal party until 1992. He, o- he has overseen Equatorial uh, Guinea's emergence as an important oil producer. Yeah. Got to produce that oil, baby. Beginning in the 1990s, Obiang was the chairperson of the African Union from 2011 to 2012. Ah, oh, he's making just money on top of money on top of money. He was the ah. Oh, this he's like Nancy Pelosi. He's like the he's like African Nancy Pelosi. Oh my God. Obiang is regarded as an authoritarian leader. No shit. He has been widely accused of corruption and abuse of power under his rule. Equatorial Guinea continues to have one of the worst human rights records in the world. Let's see some of that. Let's see some of that. I want to see some of that. Um, Seek independent inquiry of BLAST. International support should go directly to affected people, not government. What is this? Dark cloud of smoke shown in the aftermath of a series of explosions in Bata, Equatorial Guinea. Or Equatorial Guinea. Um, Equatorial Guinea, Guinean authorities should invite international experts to conduct an independent investigation into the explosion that took place March 7th of 2021 at a military camp in Bata, the largest city in the country. Um, government officials say 98 people were killed and 615 were injured. Okay. Um, I want to see footage of their military. How does their... Oh, this is that blast from March of 2021. Explosion at barracks rocked the city. Let's go full screen on this. As kids, they told us to fall. Son of a... Blow our dreams. I want to make candles. But the minute we... I am not... I don't endorse Etsy. I think it's pretty dumb. But I, I get it. You gotta... People who want to make arts and crafts for a living gotta put it somewhere. I, you could just put it on Amazon. But I think Amazon and internet should be common utilities. I think, I think phones are so. Oh, what? This is the scale of destruction from a series of explosions in Equatorial Guinea, Guinea, Guinea. Yeah, this is going well. Bata. Jesus, wait, how is that house still intact? No way, no way, no way. Hold on, time out, time out. Let's put let's put our tinfoil hats on. This house, if the explosion was powerful enough to knock down all these houses, why is this house still okay? No, this is different. Did they put dynamite in all the houses except that one? No, that's some Civil War shit. I don't believe that. Is it menopause or something? Okay. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna go to Black Beach pris- prison. Um, yeah, let's let's go into that really quick. Black Beach prison, Playa Negra, located on the island of Bioko. Um, Bioko, where is Bioko? Show me Bioko. Bioko. Man, if you put an island, if you put Oh, dude. 
Oh, so it's an island in the middle of a lake? Okay. Um, it's one of Africa's most notorious prisons. The prison was built, sorry, in the 1940s during the time of Spanish colonial rule. Ooh, it's an old Spanish prison? So that that's how you know. Oh, there's like, there's been just absolute horrors committed in that place. Um, at first, common crim criminals were imprisoned here. But after the independence of the country in 1968, the establishment of the dictatorship Francisco Macias Nguema, many political opponents were imprisoned and killed in the prison, including Bonifacto Ondo Edu and Edmundo Bosio. Reputation has a reputation for systematically neglecting and brutalizing inmates. Medical treatment is usually denied to inmates and food rations are said to be meager. Um, despite the United Nations standard minimum rules for treatment of prisoners requiring minimal medical treatment for all prisoners. Um, prisoners, Black, Black Beach has held a number of foreign prisoners, prisoners mainly mercenaries sentenced uh, for participating in the 2004 coup d'etat against President of Equatorial Guinea, Teodoro Obiang Nguema. Wait, what? Oh, there was an attempt! So he, Teodoro, did a coup, and then someone tried to coup him in 2004. Yeah, and he, the fact that he's posting that shit on Instagram where he's just like, <laughs> the king, <laughs> the king, I'm the king. <laughs> I love that prop. I saw that on Amazon, and I'm like, I, I gotta buy it. Until the presidential pardon on the 2nd and 3rd of November 2009, respectively, on humanitarian grounds, Ramon Esono Ebale spent th six months in Black Beach until he was released in March of 2018 after a police officer admitted to falsely accusing him on base, based on orders from his superiors. So, okay. 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 We got to learn more about Black Beach. Black Beach Prison. Let's see. We have uh, we have videos of it. Okay, let's see. Life's better when you're under. I hate these guys. I hate ads. No, don't pin it. That's not what I wanted. American Family Insurance does not endorse this podcast, but they could if they want it. You know, I'm taking I'm taking sponsors right now. Not that I need it. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's a sinister tale involving a multi-million rand super yacht. <laughs> he has, he has the the most pompous British accent. It's sinister details. Let's see that again. It's a sinister tale involving a multi-million rand super yacht. Two multi-million rand super yacht. Two South African engineers and a flamboyant politician from Equatorial Guinea. Teodoro Nguema Obiang Mangu flaunts his riches. At Damn, she nailed that. Let's hear it again. From Equatorial Guinea. Damn, I want to hear that again. Guinea. flaunts his riches at every opportunity. In fact, so attached. He's worth half a billion. To the trappings of wealth is this West African country's vice president that it seems he'll do anything to hold on to them, even if it means orchestrating a treacherous transnational plot. It's the middle of the night on the 9th of February. Two South African engineers are dragged from their hotel rooms in the West African state of Equatorial Guinea, detained on drug charges. He phoned me to say to me, I don't think I'll ever see you again. And then the phone was taken away from him. La policía detenido a dos sudafricanos por fumar la Sorry. Their detention thrust them when she got the news of the arrest. 
trying to figure out what happened. When was the last phone call that your family got from your dad? I was by the hotel and um, I had nothing to say, like, I'm going to see you tomorrow. When you got I have no idea what language he's speaking. But the phone call with the news about his arrest. What's the first thing that came to your mind? I don't know what to do, Annie. My pa is not enough to do with such a good thing. So I don't know how to do it, how to do it, how to do it, how to do it. The man's lawyer appointed by SPM a decade earlier. Hmm. To survive one night in that place is a miracle. You know, you've got murderers. Daniel uh, Van had been dumped into Black Beach after a deal with one of the president's relatives, a prominent local businessman turned sour. But his actual jailer appears to have been a far more influential figure. The vice president and the man in charge of the country's security and prisons. Oh, and he also happens to be the president's son. His name is Teodor Ngema Obiang Mangu, simply known as Teodorin. So he wasn't the president at this they time, think above but the now law. he's the president. Suddenly, there's no democracy as such, uh, and um, once the law doesn't suit them, then they just step above the law. Daniel believes he'd never have been freed had it not been for a now former judge. Former because he fled Equatorial Guinea after speaking out against corruption in the judicial system. At the time, Juan Carlos Ondo Ange was president of the Supreme Court and he found Daniel was being held without evidence. Daniel case should have been brought to justice as an alleged breach of a contract, not as a criminal offense. There was uh, no need to violate his rights as a citizen uh, to be in prison. So is it fair to say right. that Daniel was actually innocent? Of course he was innocent. It was a, a business matter. This is not a criminal issue. And nobody should be kept in prison for that. After more than 400 days in appalling conditions, Daniel was freed and allowed to return home. He recorded his experience in a book. It was really very difficult, you know, because you've got to remember all the bad things and you've got to concentrate on the very things that you try to forget. But could these two strikingly similar but apparently unconnected incidents be linked? Is it possible Peter and Frederick are paying a grotesque price for Daniel's pursuit of justice? When Daniel was released, he set about suing uh, the vice president, being Theodore and Obiang, on the basis that he had been the minister in charge of prisons and security at the time. Errol Alston has fought similar cases across Africa and became an advisor in Daniel's case for damages against Theodorin. It took five years, but in a landmark ruling by the Western Cape High Court, Daniel was awarded 39 million rand for illegal incarceration in Black Beach. How much is that? 39 rand to USD. $2 million. Each and torture. To settle the court order, two Cape Town properties belonging to Teodorin, including an opulent mansion, were attached in 2021. Daniel, though, has yet to see a cent of the damages awarded. What was causing all these delays? The vice president appealing every step of the way. Every judgment he appealed, and um, that uh, resulted in enormous delays. But then came an incident that appears to have sealed Peter and Frederick's fate. On the 7th of February this year, a super yacht called Blue Shadow, believed to be another of Theodorin's many assets, was attached in Cape Town. The move outraged the Playboy vice president, who appeared to threaten reprisals in this tweet. What do you make of the tweets um, following the seizing of the Blue Shadow? Well, it's hardly coincidental. There clearly is a link. Theodorin has been accused of corruption in various countries and is famous for his lavish lifestyle. Handed a five-year suspended jail sentence in France, he's the target of anti-corruption sanctions imposed by the UK and has had a fleet of luxury cars seized by Swiss prosecutors.
the amount of money that came in, the speed with which money came into Equatorial Guinea from oil so quickly in the 1990s into such a small country with such a distinct political culture has created an environment in which corruption has flourished and which inequality has also increased dramatically. Having okay. spent years covering... Okay, that's about enough. Um, but let's let's see what this guy has to say. Um, Black Beach Prison until we meet again. Over the past few days, the mood at Black Beach has been tense. I'm filled with a sense of foreboding. My brothers who have spent years behind these walls tell me to be prepared for the worst. Certain that a riot is looming, everyone is on edge. I struggle to suppress my feelings of uncertainty. My recovery has been slow. And although I am much stronger and getting better each day, I know that recovery... So he's he's um, injured somehow. Did they say how? Uh, no, it doesn't say. I will need more medication, better sanitary conditions, and f a few decent meals. The odds of me surviving a riot are slim. I have to fight to protect yourself... Or you have to fight to protect yourself in a riot. The warden and prison staff are indifferent and may cause... Have, are indifferent to my cause and have done nothing to aid my convalescence, uh, mostly li most likely as per their orders from above. I know that in my present state there is no way I can fight off an angry mob, so I decide that in case things go horribly wrong, I should at least write a last will and testament, which will hopefully find its way through the prison network to the embassy in the events of my death. Sitting in the gloom of my tent, I stare at the blank page for a long time, I wonder how to put my final thoughts and emotions and words on a scrap of paper torn from a notebook. How do you say goodbye to the ones you love? The ones that have shared that you have shared your life with? My wife, my children, my parents have already suffer, suffered so much, losing my brother when he was just a toddler and my sister as a young adult, and now perhaps me too. Surely this is j more than just... Sorry. Surely this is more than one mother, one father, one family should endure. <clears throat> I began putting pen to paper, writing my name at the top of the page and addressing it to the South African Embassy. I start with the practical issues, advising them that in the event of my death I want to be buried in Malabo. There is no point in adding financial and bureaucratic strain to my family's pain and suffering by getting my remains all the way back to South Africa. I add that they will meet again someday in heaven. Um, I include a message of unconditional love and gratitude to Melanie, my children and my parents for being a part of my journey in this life. It feels better to have made a start, and writing it ultimately takes longer than I anticipated. I pause often to reflect on the life I have had with my family, the times when we just talk and laugh, doing the mundane things that everyone does, all the important moments too, getting married, seeing my children for the first time, their first day at school, school prize giving, our dog bubbles, bike rides in the mountains, Christmases, birthdays, holidays. There's so many precious moments that are woven together from the tapestry of our lives, reminding me just how much I cherish, cherish each and every one of them. I mean, that is, it's incredible, the lack of hate, like the lack of, the lack of rage. Like where, where's the, is he, it sounds like he's truly defeated. Let me, let me go back. Black Beach, um, book, I'm just trying to find the author's name so I can, call, yeah, okay, is he, does he not have any? I am no longer the same man. Does he not have any rage, any anger, any any vitriol towards the I mean I would want to I would I'd be planning attempts. I'd be planning attempts on that man. That's all I'm saying for for everything. Uh, oh my god. One of the worst things that I can Probably trying not to remember, but be remembered about it, or reminded about it. But um, this is not a normal prison. 
you know, it's, it's not a question that you separate it and so on. The only people that are kept locked up in cells are political prisoners. The rest, um, uh, it's virtually a cage. It's like a zoo. They open up the gate and you throw them in there. Uh, there's 11, 12 year old boys in there. There's women and children. There's uh, drug addicts. There's um, mentally disturbed people there. I don't know if you caught that. Women, children, like 12, 11 and 12 year olds are in there with grown men. Military prisoners, police prisoners, um, we all put in there together and uh, you've got to survive. So one of the things that remember, I remember is uh, this bank teller was uh, accused of helping some bank robbers and so on. But she was totally innocent. Uh, she was probably 19, 20 years old, very smartly dressed, and um, she was really fed to the wolves. And um, yeah, she was that late in, late in the evening, the, one of the gangs grabbed her. I, I don't want to hear the rest of that, but I think we can uh, imagine. I think we can imagine what, what came. Um, Jesus, man. Um, living hell of Equatorial uh, Guinea's missing prisoners and their families. In Equatorial Guinea, hundreds of prisoners end up locked away for years on end, with no way of receiving visits from their lawyers and families. Uh, this is, and this is the main difference between, if you've listened to my Eritrea episode, um, Eritrea is far, far poorer than this country. I mean, uh, Equatorial Guinea is ranked 141. Eritrea is ranked 179 with a score of 0.4. This country has a score of 0.58. Um, so, I mean, huh. like it's, it's way above. And so I think because of the wealth in this country, there is a spotlight on people like this lavishly living um, politician there's a spotlight on his actions and the people who's he who he's abusing, but this exact same stuff is happening in Eritrea. Probably, probably just as bad, if not worse. Um, yeah, let's continue. Um, hundreds of prisoners are locked up, are end up locked away for years on end, with no way of receiving visits from their lawyers and families. These forgotten people who were, for many, invariably jailed for the following trials of irregularities, are incarcer uh, <clears throat> incarcerated in some of the world's sadly known infamous prisons, such as Black Beach, Bata, or Bioko. Since they enter the prison walls, they have neither been seen or heard from, and their relatives do not know whether they are alive or dead. Um, is a It's a hideout a hole in which humidity due to proximity of the sea and the land made prisoners live in in infrahuman conditions I don't even know what that is what's infrahuman an obsolete term describing all species below human okay a few years ago a prisoner that was finally released qualified the black beach prison in the capital of Malabo where he was detained was a hideout a hole in which you yeah 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 uh, in the country's prison, detainees are tortured on a widespread basis and their lives are in constant threat due to overcrowding. Um, that's... Uh, no. Equatorial, getting back to prison. Torture. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to find um, some kind of example of their torture. Torture story? I don't think I'm going to find it. Um... Amnesty International has documented several cases of missing prisoners. 
including that of Francisco Maica, a 68-year-old Equatorial uh, Guinean national who was living in Spain since the end of the 90s. And his friend, uh, Ful Fulgencio Obiang Esono, an engineer and Italian national of Equatorial uh, Guinean origin, um, the pair was traveling from Rome to Togo on business. Upon their arrival in Lome on the 18th of September 2018, they suddenly became unreachable. Rumors started to circulate indicating that they had been abducted by the Equatorial uh, Guinea security forces and were detained at Black Beach Prison. A few days later, the rumors were confirmed by official sources. Uh, Fulgencio and Francisco were tried with more than 100 men accused of having taken part in 2017. Alleged coup plot to unseat President Teodoro Obiang in a trial that took place in the city of Bata from March to May 2019. According to observers, the trial was marred by a host of violations of the right of a, to a fair trial. The majority of defendants had been arbitra arbitrarily detained for approximately a year without being informed of the charges against them. At the end, sentences ranging from 3 to 90 years in prison were handed out to the 112 defendants, some of whom were tried in absentia. Uh, Fulgencio and Francisco receiving almost 60 years in prison each. Since the verdict, their families have lived in waking nightmare. They carry on without understanding how it could be possible that a business trip to Togo has ended up in prison, ended up in a prison in Equatorial Guinea. Um, in Madrid, where Francisco fam Francisco's family lives, they only know that he traveled to Rome to meet Fil Fulgencio, with whom he traveled to Togo, Francisco's wife, who needs pills to sleep, feels urgent to know if he is still alive, and he, she can't stand the suffering of her children. Francisco's wife last saw her husband in 2019 on television as his sentence was read out. Since then, it, has, it is like the earth has swallowed him up. In more than two years, she has not received any news. Okay. Man, this goes on for so long. Okay. Um, so that guy is terrible. Let's, um, let's see, let's see this coup attempt. In 2004, Equatorial Guinea, a coup d'etat attempt, also known as the Wanga coup, failed to replace President Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo, uh, with exiled, uh, opposition politician Severo Moto, mercenaries organized by mainly British financiers, British financiers organized a coup. Is that... That is... Oh, my... Okay, two things. Two things. Two things. One, of course, you would try and overthrow this guy. Two, of course, some fucking bankers. Which which bankers? No, 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 no. Who tried to... Oh, to... Man, I got we gotta know who was attempting this. Um Wonga Ku Key char characters in Wonga Ku. Wonga list reveals um, alleged backers of the coup. Uh, British mercenary Simon Mann, who faces 10 years, yeah, yeah, paid half a million dollars towards the plot. Because, yeah, that's nothing. That's no half a million in comparison to 600 million? That's nothing. Um, London based Lebanese oil millionaire who's being sued in London by Equatorial Guinea regime. regime um, is allegedly to have raised another seven hundred and fifty thousand. Eli Khalil. So this guy's a piece of shit too. Dies of freak accident. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Good. I'm glad he's dead. Um, so what you got? Um, Mr. Khalil's solicitor said last night that he did not wish to respond to the claim that he had raised money for the plotters, but he denied any knowledge of the plot. Uh, according to the London newsletter Africa Confidential, Mr. Khalil is considering suing those Equatorial uh, Guinean 
officials who have accused him of financing the plot. Other alleged financiers on the list include Mr. Cleo's Lebanese associate, Karim Falaha. Let's see it. Greg Wales. Uh, Gary Hirschman. Hersham. Uh, David Tremaine. Imagine if all these guys are dead. That's going to be wild. A publisher, huh? Uh, has previously written books, book reviews for Canadian Association and Security and Intelligence Studies. Okay. He, his firm, uh, Buchamp Estates, has about 80 agents worldwide, fights over highly lucrative, hyper-competitive luxury real estate. Okay. Gregory Wales. Um, Boston, Massachusetts, managing partner. Whoa. Ventau Industrial Holdings, LLC. What do they, what do they have? Because this is American. See, I'm, this is, they, these guys are the goddamn Illuminati. That's the thing. So I see this as like the Illuminati tried to overthrow a dictator and failed. This like little mini mini Illuminati. Look at this, man. I gotta this is I gotta cut this out and make it its own video. That's wild. Who are we? Acquisition criteria portfolio. What is what do you have? Biomac interior woodworking specialist, quality stakes, Rand machine, Powell. WB Powell? Powell is pretty big. Isn't it? Um, net worth? Five million? Okay. And that's just one. Okay. So yeah, they got like a, like a sinister six of different financiers in London, South Africa, Massachusetts, and all kinds of places. Okay. So, let's let's continue. Where was I? Uh, they were arrested in Zimbabwe on set on the 7th of March 2004 before they could carry out the plot. Prosecutors allege that Moto was to be installed as a new president in return for preferential oil rights to corporations affiliated with those involved in the coup. Um, the incident re received international media attention after the reporter reported involvement of Sir Mark Thatcher in funding the coup. Who is this guy? Um, son of Margaret Thra Thatcher, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. I gotta see this guy's face. Yeah, the son of a president. This is their, um, what's it called? This is their uh, Hunter Biden. Um, his, er oh, sorry. No, that's not where I was. On the 7th of March 2004, Zimbabwean police in Harar Airport impounded a plane which flew from South Africa. The alleged plot leader, ex-Special Forces Service Officer Simon Mann, was arrested with, of course, of course the soldiers just get, they're, they're gone, because they're just soldiers. And then, like, the people with connection to the government, they end up slipping away. Uh, was arrested with two colleagues near a runway waiting for arms to be loaded onto a Boeing 740, 727, carrying three crew and 64 former soldiers recruited in South Africa. The majority of those alleged have been mercenary, uh, have been the mercenaries planning to carry out the coup were based in South Africa and ex-members of the 32 Buffalo Battalion, a special force unit that fought in the South African apartheid regime. Uh, let's see. Are these good guys or bad guys? The name like Buffalo Battalion, I don't think so. 
um, was an elite light infantry battalion in the South African Army, founded in 1975, composed of black and white commissioned and enlisted personnel. Um, what did they do? Formed a unit initially known as Bravo Group, but later renamed 32 Battalion. Initially, Bravo Group consisted of two infantry companies, a mortar platoon, anti-tank section, and a machine gun platoon. But 32 Battalion was finally expanded to seven infantry companies, a reconnaissance wing, and a support company consisting of 81 millimeter mortar, anti-tank, and machine gun sections. Um, what did they do? Members of the 32 Battalion were involved in an incident in Fola Park, uh, Gauteng, where members of the public were shot and killed. The incident drew widespread criticism specifically from the African National Congress and prompted the Minister of Defense to request an investigation by the Goldstone Commission. Okay, so they're bad guys. Definitely bad guys. Um, hmm. I'm gonna. I I can't see anything else about like. They said they fought, but they didn't say that they fought for independence or not. Okay. So, the marketing manager of Zimbabwe Defense Industries, Hope Mutize. So it's a. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place with this because this this is so interesting. So, it sounds like there are bits of allies of Equatorial Guinea, like Zimbabwe, they aligned themselves to help stop this coup that was coming, which was a coup from European and Western powers, um, which is just fascinating. Um, said in court that Simon Mann had to pay him a deposit of a hundred thousand pound in February 2000, 2004, um, and indirect, indirectly linked man to the alleged plot, saying he was accompanied by a South African Nick Dutoit, the leader of the 14 men arrested in Equatorial Guinea. Their arms requisition included 20 machine guns, 61 AK 47 rifles, 150 hand grenades, 10 rocket, blah, 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 all kinds of stuff. It was alleged that those arrested in Zimbabwe made a stopover in Harar City to buy weapons and expected to join a team in Equatorial Guinea to overthrow President Obiang. Uh, Detroit, the leader of those detained in Equatorial Guinea, testified at his trial in Equatorial Guinea that he was recruited by man and that he was helping with recruitment, acquiring weapons and logistics. He was testified he testified that he was told that they were trying to install an exiled opposition politician with Severo Moto as the new president. And who's this guy? But this guy's not alive anymore. Um, I'm trying to be a Catholic priest. Is he still alive? Um, yeah, he's still alive. Okay. I mean that this that was a lot. That was I was not expecting I was not expecting this, but um holy shit. This uh this country's screwed. I mean that man that man is evil and he attracted evil and they're yeah. Yeah, man. Um I'm going to need to take a break, lie down, go look at some go, go pet my cat. I don't know. But uh, thank you so much for listening. I love you all. See you in the next one.